Hey everybody, it's Paul with Reporting Live from my sofa. And, and y'all, we are seriously going rogue off that sofa today. Lowe's Hardware parking lot, no go. Lowe's Food, no go. Piggly Wiggly, no go. I have had to go to the bowels of the Walmart parking lot in a town far, far away. And you know as soon as I found like the most decent parking spot, somebody parked right across from me. So I was like, you know what, people can just stare at me. It's the Walmart parking lot. It's totally kosher. That doesn't detract from what we're getting ready to get into. You already know what we're getting into because you saw the title. So, I wanted to take a quick look. There was an article out that kind of was doing this, a look into the divorce case that's going on. Uh, or going on, whatever, between uh, Jennifer Dulos and uh, her estranged ex-husband, who we all know is currently in jail, $500,000 bond, and uh, charges related to her missing. They're still looking for her at the time of this filming, uh, so hopefully she'll you know be found okay. It's not looking too good with some of the evidence they found. Um, so when I read through this article, and again, what I've done is just kind of taken the snippets out of it that I felt like were the, worthy of talking about, because it, it kind of paints a picture as to what was probably leading up to the event. This is not a pretty divorce. This is extremely messy. These were people that had the money and the agency to make lots of filings and just kind of go at each other in the court system, and they did. Um, and so, unfortunately, it looks like it ended in something tragic. Um, but anyways, I just want to go through this a little bit, go over some commentary, and then we can all have a discussion in the comment section. So, what I want to start is with a little bit of history, of their marital history. Um, now, let's see. And actually, before we do that, the first few lines of the article are this, and literally, to me, this sums up the entire situation. He threatened to kidnap their children and take them overseas, she said. She threatened to have Mafia break his legs, he, he countered. She drove an SUV toward, he drove an SUV toward her, swerving away at the last minute, she said. She had mental health issues and couldn't keep their children safe, he claimed. I mean, you see the level that this is going to, coming from each party. Um, I, I mean, so it's, you know, it's intense, and it doesn't go away from that. Um, so that being said, let's begin. So they were married in New York in August 2004. Uh, both of them attended Brown University, very prestigious, very nice university, Brown in Rhode Island. Uh, he graduated one year ahead of her. Uh, now after that, they located, located, they relocated to Connecticut. That was in 2004. Uh, and now between 2006 and 2010, they had two sets of twins and a fifth child. Two sets of twins. Oh my gosh. Uh, that's just, I think that's amazing. Um, so, in 2012, the Dulos family moved to Farmington, Connecticut. Uh, and when, when Miss Dulos filed for divorce, uh, they were living in a 15,000 square foot home that Mr. Dulos's company uh, had built with her dad's money. Um, Mr. and Miss Dulos said in filings in 2017 that they had decided to separate. In March of that year, according to court documents, Ms. Dulos had found out that Mr. Dulos uh, had been having an extramarital affair with Miss Traconis for about a year, which Mr. Dulos did not dispute. So this is where a little bit of that starts to come out, because remember in the other videos I did, we were like, we don't know 100% what's going on. So it does sound like he was having an affair. This is probably, I mean, anytime an affair gets hot and heavy, and I mean, there's a difference, and I'm not saying this is right, wrong, or indifferent, um, there is a huge difference from a person who, I'm going to say, maybe they were on a business trip. They had a fling. It was a one-time thing. Now, it's still betrayal. It's still all those things. But, you know, then this right here is I'm starting a new relationship with somebody. Um, this is major, major, major. I mean, if you had to ask me, well, what do I want to have happen to me? And I actually have had these happen to me, both instances. The relationship behind your back for me was the most excruciating because you start to see how they, your partner was never present in your relationship. The relationship, which I mean, hindsight is like, well, thank God it worked out that way. I don't want to be with them anyways. Um, so that being said, I'm going off on a tangent about me. I don't know why. Let's continue. 
Um, now, let's get into some of the filings and the behavior that was going on in these proceedings. So, and I just, I kind of made like a bullet point list here. So, we're just going to go through and talk about them and read them off. Um, okay, so at one point, Mr. Dulos said that she, I'm sorry, Ms. Dulos said that she was concerned about Mr. Dulos's irrational, unsafe, bullying, threatening, and controlling behavior. Uh, the couple decided that Miss Dulos and the children would move to her parents' home in Pound Ridge, New York, a small town in Westchester County, the court document said. Uh, the couple made plans to enroll their children in a private school in New Canaan, about 75 miles from the home in Farmington, according to court records. Uh, disagreement soon followed. And so this is, you'll see where we get to this, where it's like a, a lot of this becomes a he said, she said situation. Um, that it's just like, you know, you don't really know who, what, when, where, how. Okay, so, I was waiting to see if this person walked past me or if they were going to stop and look at me. Because then I was going to be like, hi, how are you? My name's Paul. I'm Rogue Filming. So, Miss Dulos filed for divorce in June 2017 and immediately saw an emergency custody order for the couple's five children. She feared that Mr. Dulos might harm her or the children, according to a court filing. She said he had attempt no, he had threatened to kidnap their children and take them overseas. Now this is a that's something that he was threatening to do. Um, we we talked about this in another video. Um, Mr. Dulos responded by calling his wife's accusations baseless, saying she seemed delusional and that her use of antidepressants made her unfit to have sole custody over their children. Uh, Ms. Dulos said that Mr. Dulos va vacillated between telling me our marriage is over and threatening that he would never allow for a divorce. So, and again, a lot of this is, and somebody weighs in towards the end of this article. I mean, this is a, this is more normal than we like to know for any kind of marriage. It doesn't matter if there's money, whatever. I mean, this is how divorces can be messy. Um, she also said that she had become concerned over Mr. Dulos's recent purchase of a handgun that he kept in their house, and she worried that he might use it to harm her or her family. Very telling. Uh, he said that he had purchased the gun to ensure their family's safety, and he did it with her knowledge. So each thing, they just come back, and I mean, they just sit here and file these things. It's like tennis match, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, Mr. Dulos denied that he had ever threatened to kidnap the children. He said that it was Miss Dulos who had aban absconded with the children, taking them to New Canaan without telling him. So, you know, it makes you wonder, did she go to, you know, did she go up there and enroll them in school or whatever? Um, I mean, but why would she do that? It would be so obvious. So, anyways, let's keep going before we talk. Mr. Dulos and Ms. Dulos filed numerous petitions and motions accusing each other of ignoring court orders, disparaging each other in front of the children, and countless other perceived slights. Um, in one filing, Mr. Dulos sought to have Ms. Dulos admonished for keeping information from him, such as the fact that she'd chosen a new pediatrician for the children and had signed up one of their sons for an ice hockey team. I mean, it's just, you know, and if this stuff is true, because, I mean, we don't know what's true. It's a, a, again, it's a he said, she said thing, and we really don't have any basis for evidence because one person follows something. I'm sure these things are a little bit dramatic, and I'm sure there's truth in them also, but it's like they're having a fight through the course, court system, and, and this is the, the evidence of those fights. Uh, and, and unfortunately, in this situation, the children seem to be in the middle of it. Now, at the end of the day... I mean, I think it's very telling that we're all watching the situation that has occurred because a lot of this does seem like, well, yeah, it sounds like she had reason to believe that they, this guy was a danger. Clearly, he's not the safest person to be around. So, let's continue. Um, and another, Ms. Dulos accused Mr. Dulos of not giving the children a proper bedtime. She also amended her filings to document seemingly every occasion the children spent time with Miss. Traconis, the girlfriend, uh, some court orders... Okay, wait. I, I'm going to read that one again, y'all. And another Ms. Dulos accused Mr. Dulos of not giving the children a proper bedtime. She also amended her filings to document seemingly every occasion the children spent time with Ms. Traconis, something court orders initially forbid. Um, both parents also filed numerous motions saying that the other was disparaging them. Uh, Miss Dulo said that her husband had called her insane in front of her children, saying she was an unfit mother who should be locked away. 
I mean, and isn't it ironic that he's locked away right now? Uh, Mr. Doulis accused her of calling him a psychopath who didn't care about his children and didn't work hard enough to make money for the family. Very interesting. I mean, he's in jail, possibly on her murder charge, and he can't bond out. Um, not that I would bond out on a $500,000 thing either, but, you know, it's just, you know, there's a lot of, you know, fortune telling going on in these things, it seems like. Uh, at one point, he said in a court filing, Miss Doulis told the children that your father likes Farmington because he is not that smart. Successful people live in New Canaan. So, I just think, <laughs> I just find that one a little bit funny. Um... At one point in the court, yes, I mean, who knows if she really said that. I can just hear somebody saying that. Your father likes this town because he's dumb. Dumb people live here. That's why your father likes it. Yes, Mommy. Um, okay, now I can't pronounce this guy's name, so we're going to call him John S. Uh, a divorce lawyer and former president of the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers said that the vitriolic language was typical of many divorce cases and that the high number of filings was not unusual in cases involving wealthy spouses. See, I mean, this is what I'm talking about. The, these wealthy people who can hire a lawyer and fight through the court systems that money's not a thing. And so, I mean, basically they are, but again, you have to wonder because of what's happened, how much of her stuff, because say none of this happened and you just had a snapshot of this. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't really have any interest in reading somebody's court filing, you know what I'm saying? If there wasn't context of, well, now they're missing and the husband might have done something. Um, but if you're just reading this, it's just like, okay, well, this is just, you know, a marital fight being handled in the courts. And they're they're making each other's lives more difficult. You know what I'm saying? I mean, nobody wants to deal with a lawsuit or, you know, this kind of stuff. And so they're doing that, but they have the money to do it. You know what I mean? Like, whereas, I mean, I wouldn't have that kind of money to sit here and play that game. Um, but then because of what happened, you have to wonder, okay, well, how much of it was I making this life more difficult and how much of this stuff is just pure true? Um, so anyways, here we go. So let's talk about kind of where the custody situation is at now. So on the same day that Mr. Dulos was arraigned, uh, Judge Donna Heller of the State Superior Court in Stamford issued an emergency order revoking his visitation rights. I mean, obviously, uh, thank God. Uh, and doesn't matter anyways. He can't see them right now. Um, the next day, Miss Dulos' mother, pardon me, Gloria, uh, filed a motion seeking to get custody of her grandchildren. Uh, according to court documents, all five children have been staying with Miss Farber, uh, her mother, uh, in New York City since Miss Dulos disappeared. I mean, and, and other things we hear is that they are under um, armed guard, which, you know, absolutely. I mean, when you have allegations of, I'm going to have the kid children kidnapped and take them out of the country and this, that, and the other, and you're starting to see where, I mean, there's a reason. I don't think they're being dramatic at this point. I mean, this guy sounds like a loose cannon because I'm inclined to believe what these court documents say. Like I said, if this is just some random couple and we were reading these, I'd be like, hmm, sounds a little dramatic. Mm. You know, they're probably really angry at each other understandable, whatever, let's move on. But now this is like, well, let's look at this a little bit deeper because I feel like this is a story leading up, you know. I mean, as of right now, this woman, they're still searching for her body. They're at a trash dump looking for stuff. I guess they found some cl bloody clothing or something there. So they're trying to see if they can find, you know, more stuff. Um, so this is going to keep unwinding. And unfortunately, again, I'll say it a hundred times over, I don't, I get how one can get lost. Like you're in a relationship, you get fixated on certain things. Like something that person does bug you, for example, and it doesn't bug anyone else, but because you're their partner, whatever. I get that. I get that you can get lost in something. I get that we can get stuck in a relationship, whether it's like, well, we can't leave each other because of finances or, you know, we don't want to split because of the kids or this or that. But I just feel like, my gosh, if it's going to get to the point of murder, and I just would feel like, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's some things where in the heat of the moment, somebody accidentally, they get in a fight, they accidentally kill someone. I mean, I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but it's more understandable than let's plot out and kill somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like, first degree murder. Um, but I just feel like, my God, if it gets to that point, just leave. You know what I mean? Do whatever you have to do. Life's not worth it. You know, I've been in relationships before where it was like, I mean, sh very short ones, you know, mind you, thank God. Um, but it just gets, you know, when that level of misery starts to occur, it's like, just go. You know, but it sounds like this guy, um, 
maybe there was a, like ties in with money. I'm still unclear of if he had money himself, if he was only attaching to people with money. I haven't gotten that answer for myself. And if you know, drop it in the comments. Like it's hot. Um, so that's it. I just wanted to go over that article uh, and, and read that. I hope y'all are doing well. Uh, I'm going to go home because in 30 minutes, Tim Jones Jr., um, penalty phase begins, and you know we're all glued to the TV, or yeah, the t to YouTube, to our phones. So anyways, have a great day, and I'm going to talk to y'all soon. Bye!